27 Unhelpful Facts About Category Theory Fact 1. This video is a joke. Please don't take any of it seriously. I am in fact studying category theory properly and I do enjoy it, but this video idea came to me and couldn't be stopped. So please, enjoy this context-free exploration of category theory's weirdest quirks, most of which are actually true. I may make a serious video on the topic at some point, but for now I apologise for the picture I'm about to paint of what's generally a beautiful mathematical subject. Anyway. Fact 2. A category consists of a collection of objects, for any two objects a home set of morphisms from one to the other, and a composition operation, such that composition is associative and has identities for each object. Easy, right? Fact 3. Not easy. Home sets? Morphisms? The hell is an ob? You don't need any of those to understand category theory. No, you need that meme with two pictures that Pam from The Office says are the same picture. That's all mathematics is, right? You take two things and find a theory that abstracts away their particulars to deal with them together. You know, that whole thing about coffee mugs and donuts and how topologists can't tell the difference between them. Well, category theory does that, but meta. To a category theorist, all of maths is the exact same thing. In all constructions, you have some kind of stuff and stuff that relates to that stuff. And you can chain those relations together to get further relations with the same properties. And sure, you can call them objects and morphisms if you really want, but that's just going to confuse people. And we don't want to confuse people, right? To that end, here are some illustrative examples. The category of sets and set functions. The category of groups and group homomorphisms and the fundamental groupoid of a topological space where objects are points and morphisms are path homotopy classes. And if you still aren't clear on what a category is after that, good luck. Fact 4. Category theory was invented by American mathematicians Samuel Eilenberg and Saunders MacLane, and officially appeared in mathematical literature for the first time in September 1945, coinciding exactly with the formal end of World War II. Category theory has been keeping the world safe from global conflicts ever since. Fact 5. You can take some objects and morphisms from a category and arrange them to make a diagram. If all routes through the diagram between the same two objects evaluate to the same morphism, what you have there is a commutative diagram. We say the diagram commutes. Commutative diagrams are equations for the category theorist. You thought a picture wasn't a proof? Well, think again. Commutative diagrams are everywhere. Too many places, probably. Alright, uh, that's enough. Stop. 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 Fact 6. You might have noticed the word class in the definition of a category. You probably didn't, and that's okay. We all make mistakes. Why though use classes rather than sets? Sets are nice and simple. Classes are weird and technical and annoying. In practice, almost everyone uses sets and ignores the distinction. We just put class in there to appease the set theorists who would otherwise throw their paradoxes at us. It's a good idea to stay on the correct side of the set theorists. They can construct the set of all things that cause you pain. Fact 7. You can turn categories into other categories with functors. Yes, not function, functor. One who functs. Functors take objects to objects and morphisms to morphisms subject to sensible composition laws. But what that means for you is that they change your perspective on the world. You're looking at one thing, you apply a functor, and suddenly you're looking at something else. To use the meme analogy again, it's… uh, this one. Sure. Some of these functors are called forgetful functors. They do nothing except forget some of the properties you cared about in the last category. A functor from the category of edible things to the category of all things would for instance make you starve to death, because despite doing nothing to the food, it would make you forget how to eat. Fact 8. There are five ways to say things are the same in category theory. The same? Basically the same, basically basically the same, basically the same but spicy, and I don't even know how to explain this one. Fact 9. If you know any maths, you'll likely find lots of familiar words in category theory, but because we've abstracted beyond abstraction, they don't all look right. This is apparently a product. Yeah, sure, category theorists, whatever you say. And this, I'm told, is a cone. Hey, uh, MacLean, I think you need to go back to primary school, mate. This sort of thing does however mean you can study tensors without ever needing to know what a tensor actually is. You just need to understand this commutative diagram. Huh. Fact 10. The opposite of a functor is not called a defunctor. This makes me sad. Fact 11. 
you can do anything backwards by adding the prefix co. A backwards product is a coproduct. A backwards cone is a cocone. A backwards bra is a cobra. And I can't think of anything worse for support than a cobra, so the theory checks out. QED. Fact 12. One of the most famous category theorists was a guy named Alexander Grotendieck. Some people believe he's responsible for making category theory its own field of study, rather than a tool occasionally used in other places. Grotendieck was a staunch pacifist, and even gave a lecture on category theory in the forests surrounding Hanoi as it was being bombed during the Vietnam War. Once again, category theory is truly the ultimate tool for peace. Later in life, Grotendieck gave up on society and went to live as a spiritual recluse in the French Pyrenees. He died in 2014, but it's okay because his spirit lives on through the Twitter account Grotendieck Googling. Fact 13. Remember functors? They're maps between categories. But what about maps between functors? Mind-blowing, I know, right? These are called natural transformations. Natural transformations require that all diagrams of this form commute. Simple. Fact 14. There's a thing called the Yoné Dilemma, which says that if you know what a thing looks like from all perspectives, you know what it is. Students can get stuck flip-flopping between believing the Yoné Dilemma is entirely trivial and believing it's the most complex thing they've ever seen. Fact 15. Remember natural transformations? They're maps between functors. But what about maps between natural transformations? You see, the category of categories, together with functors and natural transformations, is in fact an example of a two-category. These have objects, morphisms, and morphisms between morphisms. Ah, but we've started counting now, and once mathematicians start counting, they can't stop. Literally. You've got your three categories with morphisms between morphisms between morphisms, and your four categories with morphisms between morphisms between morphisms between morphisms, and your five categories between morphisms between morphisms between morphisms between morphisms between morphisms, and then somehow you go all the way up to infinity categories of what the hell even are those? Fact 16. Have a break. Fact 17. A coconut is just a nut. Fact 18. Due to its extended isolation from the rest of the world, Australian category theory has developed into a strange beast that even other category theorists fear. Its separate evolutionary lineage allowed it to reach levels of abstraction never dreamed of in the old world. So basically it's the mathematical equivalent of marsupials. Also all their commutative diagrams are upside down. Fact 19. There's a thing called the pentagonator. I don't really understand what it is, but knowing a word like that is out there somewhere makes me happy. Fact 20. A monad is a monoid in the category of endofunctors. Nobody actually knows what that means, so they'll just parrot a monad is a monoid in the category of endofunctors at you repeatedly to make themselves look smart. Fact 21. Initial objects have morphisms to everything, and terminal objects have morphisms from everything. Fact 22. Category theory has lots of exciting real-world applications, such as... Uh... Well... Um... There's... There's... Uh, I'm, I'm sure there was... Something? Fact 23. What do you call someone who reads a paper on category theory? A co-author. Fact 24. Oh, yeah, uh, functional programming. Right. Functional programming is an increasingly popular programming paradigm that owes its development to category theory. Huzzah, we've found a real-world application. In functional programming, you pass functions as arguments to other functions, and nothing keeps any state, and you can have type int to int to int to int, and there's this thing called maybe? Oh, how did that get in there? Fact 25. Some people are tentatively applying category theory to the arts, art, music, literature, with a framework called category theory. Fact 26. In certain categorical constructions of mathematical logic, things can be true, false, or bottom. And finally, fact 27. The terminal object in the category of people and sexual relations is your mum. <laughs>